They are there and they are presenting arguments to the Supreme Court against adding a citizenship question to the 2020 census. But today we find ourselves at a challenging time in our nation as you all, all share the responsibility of standing together. When I initially was asked to speak, I was nervous. These experiences can help us fortify stereotypes and prejudice. If you feel comfortable, no matter what ethnicity you are, close your eyes for like 30 seconds. Imagine someone comes into your home and takes you and your family and splits you up. You are put on a ship for 76 days in tight spaces with no water, no food, and no access to use the bathroom. You are then auctioned off to the highest bidder who forces you into labor on their land. And many of your friends and family didn't make it on the ship. If you were considered light enough, you were allowed to work on the plantation in the owner's house taking care of their family. If you weren't, your days consisted of long hours, maybe a short day of 12 hours working in 80, 90 degree weather. You were subjected to being whipped and beaten if you weren't working fast enough or if your master just felt like it. And after all this, you go back to your home, which was used at the plantation you were working on. And if you were lucky, you were reunited with your family if they were still alive. You can open your eyes now. That ended 154 years ago in this nation, in 1865. Now let's talk about Jim Crow. For anyone who may not be familiar, Jim Crow laws were state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. If we were to do the math, a group of people were told that they're free from being someone's property in 1865. They weren't fully accepted in the society until a hundred years later when Jim Crow ended in 1965. We're in 2019, so 2019 to 1965, that's 55 years. 55 years since people of color in this country have been free. And that's not a lot of time. Now, we did make great strides within those 55 years and we hoped and prayed for things to get better and progress was made in communities. But now it seems like current administration is doing and allowing the same things that were done back then. There are families being ripped apart at the border. There's the constant mass incarceration of people of color. And there are people just being discriminated against because of the way they look. We have to do something. We have to use our voices to help people for those people who aren't given a voice. Racism is the misguided, systematic hatred towards any group, anyone we fear, and cultures we do not know or care to understand. This is manifested in the fears we have for Asians, for Jewish, Mexicans, Latinos, the fear of the Caribbean people we all thought to be just lazy and a bunch of weed smoking people. <laughs> Racism and its inherent traits take root in those that lack the confidence to learn to accept others in brotherhood. The fear of associating with someone different Someone who speaks different, who understands different, who is different in culture, who is different in socioeconomic standard, and it's based solely on someone being different from who we are. As I look around, I am grateful for the number of people who have shown up here. However, in a city of 15,000 people, I would have liked to have seen every citizen of this community here for this very important national event. I would venture to say there are people who feel this rally is unnecessary. 
they probably say to themselves that they are not racist and that there is no racism here in Genesee County. Well, I would say to them, it does exist and it is alive and well in our little corner of the world right here in Western New York. We would be kidding ourselves if we said we haven't seen it, even as a silent bystander, or heard it with our own ears and all its ugliness. Sometimes it's as in our face when we see a pickup truck going down the street waving the Confederate flag. We sometimes hear it from those whom we've known our entire lives and suddenly hear them use the N-word. We've seen it here in our own city council where the question has been raised and voted on that this community will not be a sanctuary city for immigrants, which sends the subliminal message that we have no tolerance for those who are not like us. And then there are those of us who look like me that say they don't have a racist bone in their body and they would be right. However, I would say to them that they have experienced white privilege. They are not necessarily racist and not always aware of their privilege. There is a saying, if you don't think white privilege exists, congratulations you are enjoying the benefits of it.